Good morning everyone. Today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most common species that we get along our entire coast. It's a species that, in my opinion, probably the most important estuarine species that we get. I mean, you get grunter, you've got uh, cob and things like that, but in terms of pure biomass and the amount of, of stumpies or well, fish that you get, the Cape Stump Nose is just phenomenal. Now, the Cape Stumpy, scientific name is Rhabdosagus halubi. Very, a nice easy one, rolls off the tongue. Sort of sounds like, sounds like the cheese, but spelled differently. It's an overall bream shape. So now when you talk about bream, sea bream, all of those black tail things like that, they, that bream shape, your, your stock standard fish. Obviously stump nose comes from that very flattened front section of the face. So it's not an elongated face, it's very, very stump. The Cape Stumpy, the defining feature of him is he's got a yellow line that goes all the way along his midriff, along like that, from the, from the front all the way down to his tail. And that's kind of the defining feature. He's a little bit less blunt on his nose than a, than a tail Stumpy, which is easy to see if you've got them next to each other, but obviously difficult to interpret by itself. But anyway, it's a bit of a, bit of a side note. Now, the Cape Stumpy, uh, loves estuaries. They can tolerate very, very low salinities, so that always a, a big benefit. You can work almost all the way up into fresh water, but obviously they do need that little bit of salt for their osmoregulation. Interesting fact, osmoregulation, so basically it's how the fish move water in and out of their body. It's all animals do it, we do it ourselves as well. Now, fish that are, can move between salt water and fresh water are very good at being able to change the salt contents in their body so that they don't just lose a whole lot of water. Osmo regulation, look it up, it's quite interesting. Might do a video on it later. So the Cape Stumpy, he's got a slightly downturn mouth. Generally that means he's going to be feeding on the bottom, going along like that. He's not a predatory fish, although they will take small sprats and stuff like that if presented with the opportunity. Um, they're not as predatory as something like an Atal Stumpy or things like that. They love crustaceans, love bivalves, so your little uh, sand clams and things like that, little mussels, crackers, mud prawns, uh, any other shrimps they're gonna get their hands on. Um, they pretty much eat anything that they can get to and they're normally the first fish that you'll catch if you go fishing in an area and you put a little cracker shrimp drifting for a spotted grunt or something like that. Cape Stumpy is normally the first one to hook on. You get them in big shoals, they sort of cruise around. They are a hell of a lot of fun on ultralight tackle. You can go target them. I mean, I've caught them on everything from hand line to fly fishing little floats, even on spinning tackle. It's pretty much one of those species that's a lovely introduction to kids. You use your tiny little rod, go down, small pieces of bait anywhere in the estuary, you're almost guaranteed to catch them. Now being said that they're estuary species, they're also very sensitive to things like pollution and, and, and any inflow of, of pollutants into an estuary. They're one of the species that gets absolutely hammered with stuff like um, toxic spills, the big caustic uh, acid or caustic soda spill that we've just had. Um, anything like that's gonna wipe out all of the young and most of the adults in the population. So then obviously the next years after that, you get hardly any fish coming out. On a slightly more pleasant note, they are very nice to eat. Um, they are the smallest of the stumpies. So whereas Natal stumpy gets to about 70 odd centimeters, which is a giant. The uh, Cape stumpy only get to about 40, but you normally catch them a hell of a lot smaller anywhere from about 15 centimeters up. Um, yeah, they make very good live bait, good eating, and they're a fairly common species. Nowhere are they really overexploited, but obviously sensitive to the pollution. So yeah, Rebdosagus halubi, Cape Snub Nose. Cheers guys.